Well, we've just arrived at Doint Communal Cemetery here in northern France, where we know John Ratcliffe, our, our boy John, uh, from our school, Christ Church, is buried. Um, it's been a really horrible morning, it's been raining, it's cold, and once, once we've arrived here, all that's gone, so I think that's lovely respect for John, and it's great for us to be able to, uh, to walk into the cemetery uh, and show you where he's buried. It's a, you can see it's, it's not a large cemetery, uh, there's only a few hundred. Um, beautiful as all these cemeteries are, they're stunningly peaceful in this tiny little village. Uh, and what we do know about John is that he was badly injured, uh, fatally wounded at Secker Heart, and he came here, it probably took him about a day to get here, uh, in absolute agony, and a, a quote from the Warrington Guardian, uh, the nurse that said of his wounds, uh, your husband was admitted here on the 9th. We know he was injured on the 8th of October. Your husband was admitted here on the 9th of October 1918 and died the following day at 1.45 a.m. He had very severe gunshot wound in the thigh, right in the hip, the bone being broken and also a wound in the right hand. He was conscious when admitted, but passed away peacefully at the time stated, which is really nice to know that he had somebody with him and was being looked after. The casualty clearance station, they had hundreds of them on the Western Front, and they were just tents in open fields, so there wouldn't be an awful lot of things to really support him with such horrible wounds. And I'm pretty certain, if you look just behind me, in the open fields there, will have been where the, the clear casualty clearance station would have been. You can picture all the um, tents, white, lots and lots of white tents there would have been up there. And John would have been looked after in one of those. So we're just going to walk into the cemetery now and find John's grave. And we know, we know where we're heading for John because we've got, I have a, a map here of, is that the article which is, is from the Guardian. I have a, a map here which I've marked, he's right at the top here. So as we walk through the cemetery we know he's right at the top on the right hand side. So we should find him fairly quickly. So we'll just, uh, we'll do that now.
so this is our long journey to see um, to come to John's grave is is our job so it's sad but really poignant uh, we should we should feel fantastic that we're able in the hundredth year in the end of World War one that we're here and able to remember him and I am so honored so privileged to have this beautiful wreath that you made and gave to me yesterday I mean how, how remarkable is this that here we were at Padgate Cenotaph yesterday remembering him and today we're at his grave so I am the lucky one I am the privileged one on behalf of all of you at Christchurch School to be able to leave this this beautiful wreath here for John and I'll, I'll lay that now for him. God bless you John. And I'll just, I'll finish this uh, really, really poignant moment uh, with the words that we said yesterday while we were at the Cenotaph in Padgate uh, for John. They went with songs to the battle. They were young, straight of limb, true of eye, steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end against odds uncounted. They fell with their faces to the foe. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. You have seen when we walked into this beautiful peaceful cemetery that John's in. Um, the Cross of Sacrifice um, behind me here. Um, they have these magnificent crosses are placed in all the cemeteries around the world where there are more than 40 Commonwealth soldiers who are buried. I mean you can see around here there's very many more. I think there's more like 400 here than 40. Um, and there are a lovely sign of uh, our prayers and thoughts for all the soldiers who died here. Uh, the significant thing of the, the sword within the, the cross uh, is pointing downwards and that was to signify the end, it's, it basically it's over, it was the end of battle. Uh, traditionally a soldier would place his sword down into the ground that said uh, the fighting was over. So that's very significant in how we look at these cemeteries.